Uh, thank you for organizing this, Ash. It's my first altar conf, and I'm pretty excited about that. So hopefully everybody here, or at least some people here, get some really nice stuff out of the talk that I'm about to give. So just to introduce myself a little bit, my name is Amashala Detende. I work at Shopify in Ottawa as a software engineer in doing fraud and risk work. So pretty excited about that. Just started there about a little over two months ago, so excited. My talk is loving your job and why it actually matters. So I'm going to get into that a little bit. I'm going to start with a little bit of a disclaimer, which is as much as I would love for everybody everywhere to be in a job that they absolutely love, I have to recognize that that's actually not possible for everybody. There are situations that limit you from being able to change out of a particular job or move into a different one. For example, it could be a financial obligation that's stopping you or you know, student debt that could be really high or familial obligations. So I recognize that this talk may not feel as if it applies to everybody. And I know how frustrating it can be if you're in one of those positions and you hear people constantly tell you, follow your passion, but you feel like you can't actually do that. So I wanted to provide a little bit of a disclaimer with that. Hopefully, if that is your situation, there's a point where you feel like there comes a point where you feel like you can actually move into something that you like a lot more. And then hopefully this will be more relevant. But it's definitely geared towards people who either are in a job that they like and have never really thought about really being focused on figuring out what, the, what they love about their jobs and making sure that they stay in ones that they like, or people who find themselves in ones that they don't particularly enjoy, maybe are feeling frustrated or demotivated and I'll provide some strategies on how to move into something that might be a better fit for you. So I just want to start with a few facts. Uh, in 2011, Mercer did a study for 30,000 workers worldwide, and they found that 28 to 56% of people worldwide wanted to leave their jobs. Another study by Wright Management in 2012 found that of the Americans and Canadians that they, they surveyed, 65% of them said they were dissatisfied with their jobs. Now, Canada actually has one of the highest job satisfaction percentages, which is really great for you guys. I'm actually an American, so I think we probably skewed that result a, a little bit negatively from us. But good job, Canada. But definitely, there's still lots of people who uh, find themselves in a job that they're dissatisfied with. So there are many reasons people become disengaged with their jobs, and I just listed out just a few here, maybe someone may identify with them. So one is that they find their work is not personally meaningful or purposeful. Uh, they may feel a lack of self-autonomy, um, self-determination or autonomy. They may feel that they lack constructive or useful feedback from their bosses or coworkers. They may lack supportive relationships with superiors and coworkers. And they also may feel that they lack growth or growth opportunities. That's just a few of them. There are definitely lots out there. But the effect of such disengagement can be particularly damaging, um, both to your presentation as a good and skilled employee, but also just to your emotional and social well-being and health overall. So some of these effects include lowered productivity at work, uh, increased lateness, and missing more days at work, and actually, a study by the International Journal of Business and Management in 2011 found that employees who said they were dissatisfied with their jobs missed four more days on average per year than employees who said they were satisfied with their jobs. So this also leads to you potentially looking like a less effective or um, just not as good of an employee as other people who may get more job satisfaction around you. It also includes job stress and a low morale that affects not only you, but a lot of the other people around you. So all of this can make you a less effective and less desirable employee. And in addition to this, you can get frustration that bleeds outside of your job into your social life. Um, this can include less enjoyable interactions with people around you. You may, um, because you're less fulfilled in your job, put more pressure on the people, the events, the relationships outside of work which may be a bit too much for them to handle. Um, and it can also make you just in general more irritable outside of work and enjoy a lot of the things that you would normally enjoy a lot less than you would. So as you can see, there are tons of effects to disliking your job. And if you have ever been in a job that you disliked, you probably have experienced at least one or two of these. So, and then finally, 
an effective disengagement is that people quit their jobs. They leave jobs. At some point, they may, or they may stay in it for the rest of their lives. But usually at this point, lots of people will leave these jobs. And even worse, they may leave the field, um, which is a field that they may enjoy. This issue is compounded um, by critical retention problems that we already experience for minorities in STEM. So about at the beginning of their careers, about 60% of women who studied STEM enter fields related to STEM. But over the next 30 years of their career, about 50% of them leave for a variety of reasons, um, including hostility that they may experience on the job, potential discrimination, um, lack of career and growth opportunities, as I mentioned before. And an Anita Borg study, Institute study done in 2008 found that 40% of underrepresented minorities had plans to leave their job, and actually, even worse, 51% of women of color plan to leave their jobs in 12 months following the responses for the survey. So, as I said, lots of, there are lots of things that uh, cause people to leave. Feelings of isolation if you're a minority in the group, maternity policies that are unfriendly towards women or people planning on giving birth, um, lots of these and they impact your job. And it's even worse, actually, if you're already a minority who has this predisposition to potentially leave a field that you care about a lot, to be in a job that you find to be dissatisfying. And when you already have many of the stereotypes that come along with being a minority in the field, having the effects of becoming, or being seen as potentially a worse employee, the things I mentioned before about lateness, missed days, disengagement, low morale, all of those make it even harder for you when you already have this perception tied to you. So definitely there's compounded impact that happens by being disengaged from your job. So I wanna start and say that this is not just a theoretical concept for me, this is actually a personal thing that I've experienced myself and there was a time in my life when I almost added myself to that statistic of people and people of color leaving STEM. So I just want to talk a little bit about that to say uh, my experience with the impact of having a job where you are feeling disengaged. So I want to start from the beginning. One of the first memories that I have of computers was this game that I put up here, which is uh, Smiley Face Subtraction. It's actually the first game that I ever remember playing and the first time I ever remember using a computer. It was also my favorite game when I was five, I think it was six, when I started playing this. And I'm sure that was probably a really great sign from my parents that they had a little kid whose favorite game was Smiley Face Subtraction. But anyways, that's another story. So. I really loved this game and loved playing it. It was my first experience with computers, and as I played it, I got really excited about ways that I could change it myself, ways that I could build something like that, the fact that learning could be so interesting and interactive to me. But of course, at the time, I had no concept of what computer science was or computing, or really that much about computers in general, so this desire and passion pretty much stayed latent for the majority of my time. Uh, and here's a picture of me when I was six years old. And one of the first awards that I remember getting, which was the Computer Whiz Kid Award that I got from my elementary school. And I do have to say, I actually have no idea what that meant or why I got the award. It probably just meant that I knew how to use computers when I was six. Um, or likely it was the fact that I was very, very talkative as a child. And I also finished my work very quickly which is a deadly combination for pretty much any elementary school teacher. So they would throw me in front of the computer so I could keep myself busy and not distract as many of the students as possible. So I played lots and lots of computer games over my time in elementary school. And I think that's probably a part of why I got this award. So in fifth grade, uh, one, of my, one of my peers' parents, he worked for Oracle as a software engineer, and he came to our class and taught us about how the different parts of a computer worked using a really interesting play. Actually, a method that I've never seen done before, but it was incredibly powerful for me. And I got to play the computer bus. Pretty sure I chose that just because I like to boss people around and tell them what to do. But, um, but yeah, it was my first introduction, I guess, into seeing this computing thing and realizing that there was actual career that could be done. And from there, I was hooked. I followed every um, career day, computer science or technical track that was possible. In eighth grade, I took my first design class, which was in HTML. 
In 10th grade, I took, a compu I took an honors computer science class, 11th and 12th grade. I took AP computer science A and AB. I went to college knowing I was gonna study computer science. I joined, I was on the board of our women in computer science group, organized conferences, uh, did internship after internship. I was obsessed with computer science and I thought it showed no sign of stopping. That was until the third year after college. So I studied abroad in Berlin the spring of my junior year, my third year, and there was an internship program that they offered where they would place you with a, um, a company in Berlin. I really wanted, or in Germany, I really wanted to stay in Berlin, and so I decided that was definitely what I was going to do. I turned away all opportunities in the States and said, I'm gonna be here and waited for them to place me. Well, it turns out they actually had a very difficult time placing because their expertise was not in startups and definitely not in interaction design, which was the field I was looking to test out that summer. And so less than two weeks before the end of the summer, they still hadn't placed me. And I was incredibly stressed out trying to figure out what am I going to do this summer? How am I gonna stay in Berlin? And so because of that, uh, I sent out tons of applications and tried to get the interviews going as quickly as possible. I started getting a few responses back, and even though nothing really seemed like a great fit, I ended up choosing one of them. My gut told me not to do it, but I really wanted to stay in Berlin, so I chose it anyways. Um, yeah, that ended up not being a very good decision. So for many reasons, that job was just not a good fit for me, and tons of reasons I won't go into right now. But I remember during it becoming really dissatisfied, um, really frustrated with my position, really disengaged, not desiring to come to work, as I mentioned before. And at the end of it, I realized I never want that to ever happen again. So my analytical mind started thinking, what are the reasons that this happened? Let's make sure so that this never happens to me again. So I looked at it and realized one thing that really frustrated me the whole time was what I was working on my project, the work, the job. And to me, I started looking and thinking about that as this means that software, which is the key thing of what I was doing, maybe that's just not for me. Maybe it's not something I wanna do. I didn't get excited when I would go into work and work on these, on these projects. There were tons of other parts of it. Well, there weren't that many other parts of it, but there were other parts of it that made me more excited. And so I figured, okay, this is the end of that, moving out of this field, moving into something else that I like better. Went back for my last year of college and told myself, okay, well, you've already done three years of computer science, so finish that off and start looking for other uh, fields or majors or studies, take additional classes that will be interesting to you. But luckily, um, I took an organizational behavior class or organizational theory and behavior class in management and science at my school. And that was amazing for me. One of our first, uh, one of our first assignments for the class was determining why it was that you were unmotivated in a job. I know, right, it seemed kind of a perfect assignment for, to be my first one. But they'd asked you to look at a previous job internship that you did before and figure out what caused you to be either very motivated or unmotivated using the research that we had in the class. So I took it as a chance to look deeply into, the re into my past internship. And through that I realized uh, my disengagement from it actually had pretty much nothing to do with what I was working on. And when I looked at what I was working on outside, I realized it was really interesting. The projects I did were cool, the tasks that I accomplished were interesting. But for a variety of reasons, including um, management structure, the social life at the, at the company, support on the job or lack thereof, those were actually the reasons that I didn't enjoy what I was doing. Luckily for me, um, I figured that out earlier rather than later and was able to rediscover the passion that I had for computer science, particularly as I took only one computer science class that quarter and I absolutely loved it. So the combination of figuring out what it was about that job that I actually didn't like, and then also realizing how much I really loved this technical class I was taking, helped me stop from pretty much leaving STEM entirely and rediscovering my passion, and then actually led into me pursuing a master's and, yeah, basically becoming even more and more passionate about computer science from there. So I want to share some strategies that I had in this quote-unquote early life crisis, I guess, that I like to call it. 
Um, and hopefully some of these are useful for people who may feel that they're struggling through the same thing. So the first and foremost important thing, I think, is reflecting. And this is probably the last thing you want to do if you hate your job, to come home and think even more about this job that you hate. But in fact, um, having a clear idea of why you don't like something and also having more of an idea about who you are as a person is absolutely important to be able, being able to discover a new career or a new path or a new job that may be more satisfying for you. So a good first tip that I found is to look into your past. And for me, I looked way into my past, like elementary school and middle school and things like that. And I think it was super helpful because you're looking at a time when probably you had fewer obligations, you had fewer barriers, you kind of thought you could do pretty much anything that you set your mind to. And so at that point, what was it that showed up that you were passionate and interested in? And so I remember one Christmas I came home and I just looked through a bunch of stuff that I'd saved, all the artifacts of my childhood that I'd left in my house, things that I seemed to be proud of at the time, and kind of did an inventory of those things. Here are some, some photos that I posted up of that to see what kind of things I was interested in and if there was a thread that connected all of it. So I saw lots of things about art and drawing and building and crafts and an entrepreneurship uh, thread, I guess, that tied through it, magazines I'd created and businesses I'd been working on. And so that helped me gain some insight into myself. Then the next one, the next step I'm saying, uh, I want to offer up is writing it down. So list and list of things to remind you of what makes you feel good or what made you fulfilled in another job or what went wrong in the last one. So I have just a few questions that I think might be useful to think through when you're writing up those lists. Uh, one is, what did you like in your previous jobs, or what didn't you like? Sometimes one of these is much easier than the other, but they're both really good questions to help you figure out what might make you more satisfied in your current job or in one that you moved to. Then, what makes you happy? Uh, this doesn't have to do any, have anything to do with work or jobs at all. In fact, I think it's a lot easier if it doesn't. So for me, I wrote things down like, leisurely bike rides or chatting with friends or listening to new music, things like that that were a lot easier and actually made me really happy writing that list. So that was nice. Um, that's an additional plus. And then you start seeing threads and trends throughout uh, the things that you write down. Then next is what motivates you. Of course, this is kind of a difficult one, but over time you can start thinking a bit more deeply about yourself and that will help you find positions that you enjoy. Then. Another one, another tip is let the quizzes do it. So when you feel incredibly unmotivated, which very likely happens if you've been in this type of position for a while, just go to the internet, Google motivation quiz if you, don't, if you can't think about what it is that motivates you and let the quizzes do it for you. When I had very little energy after this internship and really wasn't enjoying it that much, I remember I searched motivation quiz. I think the first one I did was some Oprah.com quiz or something like that. And it was actually really nice to not have to think so much about it and just answer and fill in some radio buttons and then have someone tell you, this maybe motivates you. So if you feel like you don't have the energy to do this kind of reflection on your own, totally fine. Go online and let them handle it for you. Give, them a little, give you a little insight into yourself. So I also found that the Meyer-Briggs personality test, if any of you know about that, was really useful for me. And there's a book I want to recommend. I'm not like an endorser or anything for this book, but I found it super useful and my mom recommended it to me uh, when I was going through this. And it's called Do What You Are, Discover the Perfect Career for You Through the Secrets of Personality Type. And so it's really nice. It has a lot of exercises and quizzes and tells you a bit about about your personality type, things that may or may not motivate you, things that may or may not give you energy based off your personality type, um, and, and also jobs that they think might be a good fit. So actually this book was one of the most useful things for me when I was going through this time. And then uh, last tip is ask for help. So you may not feel comfortable doing this, but you definitely should ask for help. You're not alone when you feel really demotivated or um, disengaged from your job. Your friends and your family and those that you support around you can be super impactful in this when you're looking for a new position especially. And so something to do is to enlist your friends and 
uh, while it may seem counterintuitive, your friends actually have a lot of insight into who you are as a person. They see the things that you're passionate about when you talk to them. They see your eyes sparkle when you talk about different topics. Um, especially for me, a lot of my friends were like, okay, I don't know why you're leaving STEM. I can tell every time that you talk about it that you get really excited. And so getting that insight from an outside perspective really helps a lot. Um, and then last tip is to put out the bat signal. So first, let people know that you're having a tough time. Let them know that, you have, that you're not enjoying your job or that you may feel dissatisfied during your job. Um, lots of people are around to help you. It's easier for them to maybe search for jobs when you may not feel the energy to do so. Uh, they may have insights into new positions or new locations or new careers or have talked to new people that you've never even heard about and they could be really useful in giving you additional insight and uh, tips for positions that might work for you. Uh, so yeah, definitely reach out to your friends, get support from them and I hope that everybody gets to get to a point when they're in a job that really excites and engages them and makes them feel like they're growing as a person. But particularly for people who are minorities, this is especially important, I think. Um, so definitely if you're in a position where you feel like you're not in a career path that you enjoy or not in a position or a job or with a company, reconsider staying there or reconsider not changing things in their current state uh, and realize that like I said, especially for minorities, the longer that you stay in something that you don't enjoy, the harder it is to combat a lot of the other negative uh, stereotypes or situations that you may come upon. And I definitely don't want people to be part of those statistics. So that is the end. Just want to put some credits here. There's Liz Abenante gave me inspiration for the slide deck with her really great design from AlterConf Portland 2015. And uh, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know. I think I ran out of my time for sure. But if you have any questions now or afterwards, just let me know. Thanks.